Ever since I could say War Eagle, I wanted to go to Auburn, and it didn't really click that I could do gymnastics, do the sport I loved at the place I loved, right? And that's when it clicked, is that, oh, wait, Auburn, Auburn has a gymnastics team, and I, I want to be on it. Like that, my mommy went there, and I want to be like my mommy. She's my superhero, and that, that is where I want to go. That's who I want to be, and I want to do gymnastics for the place I love. home. My mom went to Auburn and my mom is my biggest role model. She perseveres, she's disciplined, she's beauty, she's strength, she's courage, she is everything that I want to be in a woman. And she loved Auburn. She ride or dies for Auburn. The way that she loved Auburn gave me a passion. That was that she just loved it. It was pure. It was pure love for a place. And so, you know, I love it because one, I love my mom and I want to be like her, but then I came to Auburn. And there's that saying, like the Auburn family is so true though. Every time I think of Auburn, I think of family. It's not like any other place in this country. It's not like any other university or institution. There's nowhere like Auburn. It, when she was, you know, still a baby in my stomach, I could set the church hymnal on top of my my very pregnant stomach, and it, you could just watch it move because she was moving around so much, and I was always so scared, like, what if she gets all tangled up in there? She was a mover and a shaker, and she came out moving and shaking. She was born on Christmas Day, so she was always our Christmas gift, and she's a redhead. So she was very spirited. I put her into dance when she was just two years old. And about six months into that, sure enough, the dance instructor came to me one day and said, well, we have two issues. Morgan Lee really likes to talk. And she really spends more time on her hands than on her feet. She said, have you tried her in gymnastics? We lived in Orlando at the time and so we had searched the area to find just the right place and um, we landed in Claremont, which was not where we lived. It was about 35 miles from our house, but Brandy Johnson's had the best gymnastics program in Central Florida at the time, still, still is. But about two or three months into that rec class, she's now three years old, um, the coach that was coaching that rec class was Demu Cherry. And so she came to me one day when I got there to pick her up and she was like, we have a little bit of a problem. And I said, great. She needs to move out of rec and into like real gymnastics. She's doing backflips and pull throughs. She's doing things that three-year-olds are not doing and the three-year-olds in the class see her doing that and then they want to do it and then like I lose control of the class. It did not surprise me when Demu said that she was doing all of this stuff in her rec class and she needed to move out. <laughs> so we moved her on to level three and we really never looked back. She always had a black eye. She always had a broken something or another a bruised something another. Uh, so we learned, she learned how to deal with it. You know, into gymnastics, it served her well. I mean, she had a lot of energy. 
she could keep going when other people didn't, you know, were ready to stop. Um, gymnastics, I think, probably just the sport itself ended up shaping her more than, you know, the personality she was born with. I had to make a decision between if I was gonna continue soccer or if I was gonna continue gymnastics because they both took up a lot of my time. And I remember that being a really tough decision. My heart was in both. And my mom told me, you know, Morgan Lee, you have a gift for gymnastics. It's not really normal that people just flip. And for me, it was normal. I just didn't know that people didn't know how. And she was like, that is something you should probably see through. I mean, it's a gift that you've been given. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't wanna waste this gift. And so I kept, I kept with gymnastics and that's when I knew it was serious. Don't know if everyone does this, but at our house, we turned the War Eagle fight song into a lullaby. And so I did my fair amount of brainwashing. We brought her to Auburn football games. We took her to Auburn gymnastics meets, really anything Auburn we could, we had the kids there. So when um, her coach first asked her, hey, if you could go to college anywhere, where would you go? Uh, she said, I want to go to Auburn. She was like, okay, anywhere else other than Auburn? And Morgan's like, no, not really. I believe that I got my first offer leaving my eighth grade year tra as I transitioned into high school. And as I went into my freshman year, I continued to get offers from Missouri, from Arkansas, Utah, Southern Utah, New Hampshire, Alabama. All I wanted was Auburn. And so I just remember calling Auburn and he said that he didn't have any scholarships left for my year and I was crushed. I cried for five days straight because at the time you're thinking okay I have a lot of talent and this is this is what I do right this is this is my job I've done this my whole life and the fact that I I can get a scholarship for it I need to try right and I have gotten other scholarships and I'm like I can't just waste those in ninth grade you're learning how to get your driving permit and I'm like making lists in the airplane coming back from a visit of, okay, well, which one gave me more money? What are the benefits of this one? Do I stay in the ICC? Is it like Auburn? That's everything I just compared it to Auburn because Auburn was, is my dream. Someone told me that Arkansas was the SEC sister school to Auburn. No, no place on earth is like Auburn is politely what I'm figuring out. I loved Arkansas though. And so I chose Arkansas when she had committed to Arkansas. At the time, she was the uh, regional bars champ, um, state bars champ for Florida, regional bars champ for Region 8, and, um, and she ended up 14th in the nation that year at nationals on bars. And then I tore my labrum. I tore my shoulder my junior year of high school, and I had surgery on it and that changed the course of my life. It was tough to go through, but it had been torn for a while, and so I just was thankful for the time that I could take to get it recovered. It took me almost a year to fully recover and get back basics of my gymnastics, but in that time, like, my body changed, my, my mindset changed, my just, my gymnastics changed. I had never in my life taken more than three weeks off from gymnastics, and now I've taken a year off. I called Arkansas, and I remember him saying that he wanted bars. And I told him that, well, that was the last thing that the doctors were gonna allow me to do. I mean, I tore my shoulder doing bars. And he was like, okay, well, just, just you know, keep me updated. Keep me updated on, on when you can, when they start letting you do bars. So I, you know, I'm coming back the best I can. And, I, and then I kept thinking, I'm gonna risk my health to go to a school I don't love. And, if, and that, made, that was the first time in my life I'd ever thought, okay, well, if, if I can't do gymnastics, where do I go? That it's more important for me to follow my heart and be where I wanna be than do gymnastics or get money. She called the three or the two that she had um, declined when she accepted the University of Arkansas and one of them 
was that school just right down the street. <laughs> and um, the coach said, you know, I, I, Morgan Lee, I don't have a spot anymore for you. Um, and she said, but can I give you a piece of advice? And Morgan Lee said, yeah, yeah, sure. And she said, if I were you, I would follow your heart. We both know where you really want to be. And so Morgan Lee was like, do you think she meant what she meant? She might have. I said, I think your next call needs to be um, to Jeff. I remember exactly where we were. I remember the time of day. I remember the conversation. Um, and so when she called him and Jeff said, Morgan Lee, we always wanted you. We just didn't have a scholarship to offer you. But if you want to be here, we want you to be here. He said that he had a spot on the team. He didn't have any scholarships still, but he had a spot for a walk-on. And I decided I would take it. That's all I ever wanted was to be an Auburn gymnast. And so I decommitted from Arkansas on National Signing Day, and I recommitted to Auburn two hours later. I decided that I would come as a walk-on because I was gonna be coming to the place that I love the most. It was more important to follow the dream that the Lord had given me as a little girl. I grinded, I grinded my freshman year. I worked my, my booty off because I wanted it. I wanted to be here, I'm a competitor. I wanted to be the best I could be for Auburn every single year that I was here. And my sophomore year, I earned a scholarship. And that day, I'll never forget that moment I'll never forget. And it was everything that I had ever dreamed of coming true right then. For as long as I can remember, she wanted to be an Auburn gymnast. It was my dream to see her fulfill her dreams. And um, being at Auburn was very much her dream. After that, I've been able to not only lead the team by doing gymnastics, but I've gotten to pray over this team. I've gotten to build my own faith being a gymnast at Auburn. I've gotten to share stories of what it means to go after something that your heart wants, even though all odds may look like they're against you. I've had the door slammed in my face. I've been told I was never gonna be a gymnast at Auburn. I've been told I was never gonna make it, that I wasn't gonna compete for them, that I wasn't good enough. I've been told take the money and it was more important for me to give that little girl who had the dream a chance to see it out and I love Auburn I believe in Auburn and I would do the entire 20 years over again